Okay, the thing that I loved most actually is they are very blunt. Um, think things that you can say there. If you said here, you would not be happy. I mean, they just, they just didn't. If they, if they saw a big, like a, a larger person, they'd just be like, "Look at that fat guy!" And it wasn't as a joke. It was just like, "Hey, he's fat," <laughs> and and they didn't see it as, as offensive. <laughs> and and I, I loved it because I'm not the most subtle person. Uh, you know, if I'm if I'm thinking something, I'm going to say it, and and I, it's gotten me in trouble before here. But there, I could I could do the same thing. I could say what I wanted to, and they're just like, "Yeah, you're right." <laughs> it was it was great that I could just talk so freely over there, and they did not mind. And then they would get like slightly offended by the littlest thing that you super shocked by, and just love the people. They the toughest, some of the toughest people I've ever met. I mean, in, in some aspects, um, especially the older generation, they like 95 years old, 90, 95 years old, and they would walk across town to to get groceries and walk all the way back. I mean, <laughs> like you're 90, man. Most most people in America are sitting on their beds, you know, aching or talking about how their knees hurt, but <laughs> you're 90 over there and, and they're just like, well, I need a loaf of bread or I, like, I need this, I need this and it's across town. I'll get it. Cool. They'd, they'd walk 30 minutes there and 30 minutes back and like not complain a little bit. They were strong people, I guess, in that, in that aspect. They if they needed it, they, they would do it. They would. I, I could see some resolve there when they needed to do it, and if then they would do what it took to survive. And they loved their family. I could always see that. I think that was the biggest thing that I ever saw because their families would basically stay in one house. I mean, they always had their kids over. They'd always talk about the families. Everyone I ever met, uh, even strangers on the street, I had. Ask them how they're doing, and I was like, "Well, what did you do today?" And they're like, "Well, it's not my kid. You want to hear about it?" But they would talk <laughs> fifty minutes about their their little kid they've never met before. But they just loved their families, and and what they did over there was they'd have a house, um, they'd have their kids, and the kids would start moving out, and then the youngest kid would kind of take care of the parents, um, and then once the parents were uh, deceased, then they would get the house. <laughs> That's how that worked. They they'd live there. That was that was now theirs. Uh, so, I mean, the same houses would stay in the, the family for, you know, generations. Uh, just super strong-willed people that loved their, their families, and you could see that. You could see how much they cared about it. And it's not something we see over here. And, I mean, kind of once you move out, you're almost on your own. But they're, I mean, family is family forever. No matter what happens, they're family. They don't like wearing shoes. So they don't actually have carpet over there. Because it was communist, it, it's all concrete or tile. And they have a couple rugs here and there, but most of it's carpet or tile. So when you walk in, you want to take your shoes off because the streets are really dirty. And um, when I say dirty, I mean like uh, like hair from from stray pets of some some sort of some animal, or just dirt from you know the mountain that was right next to it. So you you take your shoes off right before you went in, and then they would have these just cabinets full, these big just cabinet full of, of slippers of, of every size. <laughs> um, I was, I was shocked at how many, like they, they'd open this. They're like, well, what size are you? And I was like, Oh, like I'm kind of this. And they're like, Oh, you look like a big view and open this thing up. And they would have to like pull these things out because they were so tightly shoved in there. They'd have so much. And they'd give you these because they don't want your feet to get cold. Cause if your feet got cold, then you would get sick is what kind of what they thought. So, and it also keep, I think it kept the house cleaner cause they were in hot, they, those shoes were in the house all the time. They never wore them outside, so I think it was less less in keeping inside. But their houses were always immaculate, always. And I never saw a dirty house inside. They kept it clean, so you didn't want to make a mess. And I mean, there wasn't anything special that you had to do to be in a home. But if they offered you in, then you, you always took your shoes off. I think the main staple is going to be souffle. Like I said, um, that is a pita. They have the, it's like it's plain yogurt. They call it Kos. It, it really is just plain yogurt for us. They, they slathered that on everything. And it tasted gross. I, I didn't like it. By the end, I didn't have a meal without it. <laughs> I was right. I mean, I, I dip everything in it and it just tasted great. And I, I miss it now. <laughs> so they'd have this pita. They put that uh, Kos on it, the yogurt. And they'd put uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, and onions, and I think lettuce. And then they had this, this giant, just big spit of meat <laughs> just it, they, it was frozen in the morning they put it out and it would just spin right next to a flame and just cook all day long just right in the open air which for us is, is weird but to them it was normal and and they really they really would just 
so they'd, they'd make the, the souffache and they'd go up to this meat and just get this big long knife and just slice it and then just fall right onto it and fold it up and hand it to you and you could, you could put um, uh, mustard or ketchup onto it or really anything you wanted but just one and I'm when I say that souffache it was it wasn't like a folded taco it was like you hold it like that and you usually had to get a fork and eat stuff out of it before you could eat like a taco because you couldn't fit your mouth around it. They were, they were big and they're only $1.50 and it was just amazing. Personally, my favorite food was something called the burek. Um, <laughs> I, I, I probably had one of these a day because I could go to any bakery, which that was another thing I loved. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> um, any bakery and they'd have burek. And so that was, they'd get this very super thin layer of pastry. It was, it was layers of uh, pastry butter, pastry butter, pastry and butter, and then they'd put. So after like four or five layers of that, they'd put really anything you wanted to. They they'd put. They had different things like uh, tomato and onion to meat and onion to. Um, they have similar things with like chocolate in them, but it was really just pastry butter, pastry butter, whatever they wanted, like meat or whatever. Pastry butter, pastry butter, whatever they wanted. Pastry butter, pastry butter, and it was just big, thick, and and they would come out and like almost these pie, and they'd give you this big chunk of it, this big slice, and that was like a quarter, and toss my quarter, and just, just loved it. It was so good. And that was, that's probably the food that I miss most, because I tried making it in Albania, or here, not the same. Don't know what I'm doing wrong, just doesn't taste the same. Also another thing in, in Albania, or I guess this is mostly Europe, is they'd have bakeries on every corner. It's super fresh bread, they would make it fresh every day. I got spoiled, because here, uh, we'd, buy, we'd buy a loaf of bread, and we make it last for a week. They, after a day, they're like, oh, that's old, throw it away. <laughs> they just, they throw it in the way and go buy another loaf of bread for 50 cents. Cause they're, they're 50 cents is buy a big loaf of bread and it's just the freshest bread. I had, I didn't throw a lot away cause I'd usually eat it. <laughs> I'd probably eat um, three quarters of a loaf a day myself. It was really delicious. I remember one time I went to this castle and we're having fun and just hopping around this castle, just playing playing games and taking pictures, you know, just doing goofing around. And then we went to this uh, restaurant that was like in the castle, and this the server was like, "Oh, y'all are Americans? But I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have you like a real Albanian dinner." And so he brought out pizzas and like pastas and just delicious stuff. And then a couple of us, he just put down this like in front of me, put this big lamb. My lamb head. It was a boiled lamb head, and I was like, "Why did he get a pizza?" <laughs> I'm like, "Wait, wait, what? Like, what made you think I, I wanted this?" Usually, they don't have much money, so if they give you food, they expect you to eat it. And if you don't, then they're somewhat offended, I guess. So you don't want to do that. So I was like, "Okay, I'll eat it." So I got over it, and I cut into it, and it actually wasn't bad. <laughs> uh, pretty that that cheek muscle was super tender and delicious, and. It, so that was, I think the weirdest thing I ate was just the, the tongue, the uh, cheek, and the brain. But not bad. It was, it was like, like I wouldn't be opposed to doing it again, that's for sure. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's food in Albania. Oh, they have fresh vegetables on every corner, and, and fresh vegetables and, and fruits. So they'd have the stores, and right next to them, right outside, they'd have stacks of vegetables and stuff that you could just buy for super cheap and super fresh food all the time. And, and they would have, in between, whatever they're eating, they'd, they'd take a bite of what they're eating and then bite of bread. Bite of what they're eating and then bite of bread. They, they love that bread and I understand why. <laughs> I did the same thing. They had this one drink that they, so like, like I'm from Texas, so people down there, they drink sweet tea in the summer. They just, just guzzle it down like water. In Albania, they drink something called Val. Interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, it's not, it wasn't my favorite. I didn't see the appeal, but they loved it and if they love it, they love it. That's, that's awesome. Um, it's so it's basically that that yogurt I was telling you about the the coast. They get coast. They would strain all the the liquid out of it. They'd add salt and then mix in a little yogurt. Put it out in the sun for a couple hours, and then they'd that would be the all. And then they would chill it and give it to you. And a couple times, man. I remember this uh, one super sweet lady who just absolutely loved her. Every time she'd give us this big glass of all and she would, she, she'd sit down and just go up and down and I'm just sitting here like trying to get it down and the first time I gave it to my uh, my trainee, he, I told him about it and I could see it on his face, but he, he took it and I just saw his face go straight red. Just like, how am I supposed to swallow this? It wasn't bad, I could, I could do it. It's not something I would drink 
every day and they loved that ball. They loved it. <laughs> the alphabet's similar to, to English, um, written, I guess. There's, they have a couple letters, um, I think they had, if I remember right, we have 26, right? I think they had 32 to 36 letters. Uh, but I mean, they look the same and some of their letters are actually two letters just put together. But because they're put together, they treat them as one letter and that makes a totally different sound than either the letters combined. <laughs> um, and then they have a couple of letters that we don't have. It was a tough language to learn, I'll say that. Uh, the grammar is, is opposite of what you'd ever think. And then, I mean, when I was learning, learning it, I mean, I try to translate word, to word for word and they're like, no, the grammar doesn't make sense. Like that, that, if you said that sentence in Albania, they'd hear a word in there, they would not be able to piece anything together, what you're trying to say. So you had to think, backwards almost and then even when you thought backward you'd say something they're like what <laughs> there's guidelines and there's a lot of exceptions <laughs> um, but it was it was a t challenging language to learn but really fun um, and once you got down it was beautiful language when you when you hear hear it being spoken it's just absolutely beautiful it's hard to say where it came from I don't think people actually know there's like theories because it's super old Albania is right above Greece and so right in that area so They've been there for a while and they had their own language, but I mean, they were taken over and then people would try to invade. So what happened was the people would, they'd flee into these, these like taught you about these castles. Most of the castles were, were set on these top of these hills where there is either, I mean, I'm talking a steep hill to get up there and behind it is this giant river. So, I mean, there's no way for invaders to get in there. And if they, if they try to, they're probably going to lose. When people would invade this country, the natives would would flee into these these the mountains and these and these beautiful castles so <laughs> there's really no telling how old the language is one guy tried to tell me it was an adamic it was probably the adamic language and i was like okay <laughs> i'll give you that one yeah sure <laughs> but uh it was super old um super beautiful difficult <laughs> it was tough it's not really related to anything in the world um i guess it's like s s distantly if you look at the uh the Indo-European language tree, um, so you have like the base of it and it comes out and you see uh, English, French, and German, and you see like Polish and Swedish and you know, whatever, all these branches. But if they look at the base, the very base, it's just like Albanian, the little branch, nothing branches off of it, just Albanian right there. And then it goes way up and then you have all the languages. Just so you know it's Indo-European, but besides that, Nothing. <laughs> if I said my name was Elder Ferguson and a greenie, uh, Unyam Elder Ferguson, you know, very American, Unyam Elder Ferguson, Unyam Nga Texas, you know. <laughs> but if uh, at the end of my mission you say, Unyam uh, Elder Ferguson, Yam Nga Texas, uh, you have to change the, the, the accent of the word for them to really understand. If you just say Texas, they don't, they're like, what's Texas? If you say Texas, they're like, oh, you know, from, from America. Um, so I guess another greeting like, Unyam, Unyam Nga America, whereas a returning missionary, Yam Nga Amarik. It's almost like you have to close your mouth into like an oval a little more, and it's a lot of tongue movement. Um, tongue placement is key. So when you're learning it, really learn where those tongue tongue is placed. They have one, a letter that's one L and a letter that's two L's. And it's, so you tell me if you hear a difference. Uh, la, la. I heard a difference, but it's hard to hear it when you, it took me a solid year and a half to really like master that one. I mean, the difference between that letter can be devil and boy. I mean, in, in a word, it's, it's that subtle of a difference and totally complete different meaning to, to them. Toronto is kind of I guess America's New York, if you think about it, but it's the, definitely the most industrial. Um, I saw there's factories all over the place. There are uh, skyscrapers and, and nice nice buildings in there. There's a lot of nice apartments. Um, so living in, a, living in Toronto was, was definitely nice because, I mean, if you needed a store, it, there were 50 right under you. <laughs> that you can get whatever you wanted because they all had um, Similar things, they all have something different, and you can go whatever, get whatever you want to write under you in the apartment complexes. So transportation, um, interesting. So they have these little little vans called for, they call them furgons. Um, so they don't. I think I saw I rode on a bus like twice in Albania because if they have buses, it's not going from city to city; it's going around the town to get people around if they need it. Like more in Tirana is where they were. I think in Fia they had one bus because it went to the the village and back. 
But um, if you want to go from city to city, they, didn't, they don't have subways or train. I guess they did have a train, but they are very slow. And I think they were pretty, they didn't, they like went in the morning and night, like that was it. So for going, it's just a van. It's the big like 12 passenger van that they would like take the, the back seat out. So if people had luggage, they would just shove stuff in there. And so I guess they, they could fit nine people in there, but they'd squeeze about 20. <laughs> they'd squeeze about 20 people. And I, I just remember like perfect stranger and you just, you're just right next to each other. And, and it wasn't weird to them. That's just what happened. So and then the first time I did that, I like, I felt a little awkward and weird. And then I realized they felt perfectly normal. So I was like, okay, I can relax. <laughs> so that's what they do. They You'd pay them, depending on what city, you'd pay them 50 cents to like $2 to go for um, 30 minutes or four hours, you know, whatever, whatever you needed to do. So cost of living is definitely way cheaper, way cheaper there. Um, they use something called lek. So we have like pennies, nickels, dimes, you know, stuff like that. They just have lek where one lek is equal to one cent about, you know? Um, so and we say like 500 pennies would be $5. They, they just say five is 500 lek. Um, so, and they'd have like, uh, 50 lek coins to a, f a 500 lek paper bill. I think they went to paper after you got after 200 lek and then 500 lek, 10 hundred lek, 50 or 20 and then 50. So it was much cheaper to live there. Rent was, was way cheaper. We were in nicer apartments and I think we only paid like 200 to 250 a month. And those were nice apartments. Most stores, they're just stores at the bottom of a apartment complex. They'll just have like rooms and they'll, and I mean, I mean, they have very, they have, they're small, about the size of this room and they would stuff them full of so much food and I mean, I mean they have anything, food, soap, string, uh, paper, you know, whatever, drinks, whatever you wanted. Um, and they would stuff it full so you could just run down from your apartment, like right around the corner, get it. And interestingly enough, across the street, they'd have the same store almost, uh, owned by someone else. Uh, and, but people wouldn't go to this one because that was across the street and they'd just go to that one. So they didn't have chains, but people would, would own their own stores, but they had about the same stuff and maybe a couple, couple things different, but mostly just stuffed, crammed full of everything you'd, you'd think of. So people didn't need to go to this big QTU because they could probably find it cheaper for <laughs> right underneath them. <laughs> El Basan, it was, that was the most country place I'd been in. Um, there, there weren't big stores. There weren't big like skyscrapers. It was one or maybe two story houses all the way around. All you could see just long roads with houses on them. And interesting out of, about Obasan in the middle of their, their city, it's this big outer castle wall. So it was an old castle uh, from way back, like 1300s or something. Um, and it actually, I don't know if they knocked it down or people during communism did, but the interior of the castle was basically gutted out. So you'd, you'd go into this castle, had this big, beautiful artwork. You'd walk in and then you'd see the same houses that you saw outside just lining inside the castle. It was actually so this beautiful castle wall and then there's just normal houses. <laughs> it was just super funny contrast. In Albania, what you do for fun at night is to, and I saw this most in El Basan because it was a smaller city. You'd go to the, the main square and you just walk, they, they would actually block these big roads off, this big section of the road, and then you'd, they'd walk up and down it with their friends. They, I mean, they didn't buy very much, they didn't go to stores or movies, they would just walk up and down and talk to family and friends, and because you'd probably see everyone in the city there. They are on that street, walking up and down, having a blast. They would just love it. <laughs> and it, it didn't make sense to me because I'm like, you're walking down the same road, but they, I mean, everyone I saw, they were, they were smiling and enjoying their time. So that was El Basan. That, I mean, that was life in El Basan. I went to a city on the, the beach down in the south called Vlor. Um, super beautiful city because it was a nicer place because that's where, that's the city where you go to when you bring tourists in. Um, you, you, when it's a beautiful city, they have um, a lot of, they have a couple castles, um, I guess 20, 30 minutes around them. Um, but that's the place you stay if you want to go see those. You, you see those, you come back, and then you stay in, in nice hotels. And they have really nice hotels there, actually. I don't know, I said it was a port city. They, they were right on the beach. It was super clear water, just absolutely beautiful. This was a, one of the cleaner cities, super clean, super beautiful. Everyone was nice and just loved all my time in Albania, I, people ask me 
favorite cities and and I have to talk about my favorite experiences because the cities themselves were all just so much fun. Uh, um